Shares in AIM-listed United Oil and Gas have been suspended following a conditional purchase of Egyptian assets owned by Rockhopper, a field that currently produces a net 1,000 100 barrels a day. The deal was worth $16 million or £12.9 million at current exchange rates and BP will provide a prepayment financing arrangement. Brian Larkin is Chief Executive of United Oil and Gas. He joins us now. Brian, welcome. Thank you. And congratulations because I'm reading around this, uh, this today when the news came out and it seems like it's a win-win for all those concerned. Um, it's quite an audacious, uh, audacious uh, bid because of the size of your company. In fact, I think it's a reverse takeover, isn't it? That's correct, and I think what we've we've never been shy about our ambition for the company. We want to grow it, and we see this opportunity as a real transformational opportunity for the company to take a giant leap forward. It is a you are right. It is a good deal. It's a good deal that works for everybody, and they're the deals that we prefer to do. We want to do deals that work for a seller and also work for the buyer. And um, we're very pleased to announce this morning's transaction. Um, Explain the details of what's going on here. I'm, I'm surprised to see that BP's got involved. We've got here two, or well, certainly one relatively small company, but BP seems to be happy. What, what's what's the, the, the origins behind the way in which this is structured? Well, it's a, it, it, it's a novel structure. I mean, we said to the market a year ago that we were going to go out and do a transformational deal that was going to be structured differently. And we brought BP into the table, and BP have provided us. It's essentially, it's a, it's a prepayment funding structure underpinned with a hedge. So it's a little bit different. Um, it's quite different. It's quite novel. But the most important thing is, not only are we saying this is a good deal for our shareholders, BP have looked at this deal. They've put their technical team on this deal to, to carry out a very thorough in-depth technical evaluation and they're very happy with the, this deal so much so that they're prepared to pay up to eight million dollars or to finance up to eight million dollars of the transaction and not only that more importantly we've established a relationship with BP and we're looking forward to working with them not only just on this asset but on potentially other uh, uh, acquisitions as the United story and company grows. Mm. Uh, through this deal you've also forged some sort of um, almost dependent relationship I know with Rockhopper and they become a shareholder effectively don't they? Well share, uh, Rockhopper have agreed to underwrite up to five million dollars uh, of consideration in shares in consideration shares for this transaction so we'll see I mean if you, if you, if you look at the headline number of 16 million dollars we've got up to eight from BP up to five from Rockhopper we have some um, on balance sheet cash ourselves so the transaction as we've announced this morning is pretty much done in terms of funding but what we'd like to do is raise additional equity and maybe pair Rockhopper back a bit so that uh, we have a more balanced uh, shareholder base but Rockhopper's support for the transaction has been immensely helpful. Mm. And as I said at the top, you are buying an asset that will end up, I think, having a net 1,100 barrels yep. uh, bottom line to, to, to yourselves. Um, that brings uh, production onto the uh, books quite a lot earlier than I think investors had been expecting. Yeah, well, if you look at our asset base already, we do have production kicking in next year from Italy. Now, we drill that well for about a million euro and it'll kick out two and a half million US dollars to us after ta or, sorry, pre tax for approximately 10 years. So, we did have production kicking in next year anyway. But what we wanted to do is if you think about the oil and gas life cycle, the elements you've got, you know, expiration, uh, appraisal, development, and production. And if you look at our existing asset base, you'll see that we have each element of that life cycle populated. And what we really want to do next with the company is grow that outwardly. And this deal today does that. We have production, expiration and development upside all contained within this portfolio of assets. So it's really, it's a great deal for us. A year ago, this asset was producing approximately 800 bar barrels a day net net to rock copper. It's now up at 1,000 barrels and we're expecting and hoping to see that growth in production over the next number of years. Let's take a look at the share price because I said at the top it's been suspended. Um, what are the mechanics involved from here on in, from where we are now, what, 4.04 pence on suspension? Where does this go? When are we expecting them to come back to the market? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. You know, a lot of work has gone into getting to this stage of the transaction, but there's a lot of work ahead of us over the summer. We have an aim readmission document to complete. We have various work streams in terms of CPRs need to be produced or augmented to facilitate this particular transaction. In addition to that, we have a working capital review to go through our auditors. So there's quite a bit of work to do over the next number of months. And once that completes and we have a AIM readmission document ready to publish, we will hold an EGM. 
and our shares will re will start trading again on the market. Mm. And, and you said um, just a short while ago about your intention, perhaps possibly maybe to do a placing of yeah. some sort using equity. Um, why is that your preferred way of doing things? I mean, that does tend to impact on the share price when you do yeah. raise money that way. Yeah, it's a good question. It's a fair question. But I think if you, if you step back a little bit, even if you look at the transaction we announced last week, we had, we had divested an asset. That'll, that'll, that'll gen we, we, we acquired a, a, a license in a, in a licensing round a year ago. We did some internal work and we sold it for a headline consideration, potentially up to five million US dollars for us. A chunk of that money will land soon in our bank account, approximately a million dollars, and then further installments next year. So that money again will be reinvested in the business. So we are managing our assets to create cash that we can then reinvest in the business. But coupled with that, We've brought BP in to finance this transaction. We've got Rock Opera also as part of the deal. But what we'd like to do is bring in some, maybe some smaller institutions, some institutions into our stock to, uh, to help really grow the business, not just for this transaction, but we want them to come in and invest in the management team, invest in the assets we've currently got, and be there for the next one and the next one. Yeah, and just to go back to the management team, you are mostly on the whole from Tallow, aren't you? Yes, we're a formidable oil group, essentially, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and that is, just, I guess, part of the relationship you've got with BP, I suppose. It's where the roots go yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. When, when working with an international like Tullow, a major international like Tullow, you do get exposed to, to a lot of other oil companies. You get to meet other senior executives mm -hmm. and, uh, you, you know, you establish friendships and relationships. So it's always helpful. And we've always, we've always said that about United. We would look to build on the company based on the relationships in the industry that we have. And having BP as part of this process is certainly a demonstration of, yeah. of those relationships. And they say it's not what you know, it's, 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 it's who you know. So uh, true. Let me, let, me, let me just quickly go back uh, to the company. We've spoken about Italy. Yeah. Uh, we know about this deal today and what it's likely to give you in terms of, 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 of income. Uh, what about the rest of the business? Explain a bit more about what's happening because you are a very busy team. We are, and we have a pretty wide geographical footprint, and, and it might seem that it's, it, uh, that it, that it's un unworkable or unmanageable, but all of our positions are non-operated. Uh, we work in areas that we know well from our from our time at Tullo and you know my technical director and my CEO well, we spent a lot of time at Shell so we have a lot of experience globally so it would be silly of us not to tap into that experience and knowledge of those regions but right now if you go around our portfolio base we've got Jamaica which is a super wildcat exploration play we're hopeful that we'll elect to drill a well on that back end of this year bring in a partner drill a well next year in addition to that we've got an option over some acreage in Benin uh, we've also got uh, a Wessex Basin business Wessex Basin was of strategic interest to us when we started the company, really hooked or underlined by uh, Witch Farm, uh, Europe's largest onshore producing oil field. Coupled with that, we have some acreage in and around uh, the, 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 the Central North Sea and around the asset that we've just disposed of Crown. So we have a nice portfolio. It's well balanced between risk and uh, reward. And we've got some production now coming on stream, which will be hugely helpful for the company. Mm. At a market cap of 13 or 14 million, yeah. as, as you say, it's quite a lot going on. Uh, where do you see the business at the end of the year? Well, we've, we continuously punch above our weight. We've always done that. The company was, was started uh, pretty small and we've grown very rapidly over the last four years, including an IPO. So certainly on the back end of this transaction, United will be a different company. It'll be a much bigger company and it'll certainly be a very different company. We'll have significant material production coming into the business to fund its growth and fund uh, the wider development of our portfolio. And what will be the market capitalisation anticipated at that point when you do get your know, Italian assets up and running and everything is uh, working as you expect it to be? What are we talking about in terms of the net worth of the business? Well, it's a, it's a little bit hard to say because there's one thing that, that I, I don't quite understand is share price performance in okay. relation to market cap. But in reality, we, we, we've got a $14 million market cap today. We're doing a transaction of approximately $16 million with an MPV in excess of $30 million. So you'd certainly hope to see a huge chunk of that reflected in our share price and our market cap when, when this deal completes. Yeah. OK, look, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thanks indeed uh, for dropping by. My pleasure. Brian. Uh, talking there to Brian Larkin, Chief Executive of United Oil & Gas. Uh, with that audacious deal, it's done with Rock Hopper.